people, houses, and family structure following one thread. James Starks worked for John Adams Marchant in the 1850s. Then James worked for Clay. James had three children. Middle amongst them was Mamie, born in 1888. James and his wife Virginia built an Italianate house on the west end of the Willow Mills village in 1890. James Starks used George Baltimore for his carpentry. George was born in 1860 in Union Mills, Virginia. George worked for the mill as a carpenter and as a weaver. He was one of Clay Marchant's pallbearers when that day came. George and his wife Fanny had three sons and four daughters. They lived up and down Willow Mills Road. George's daughter Emma lived at 1709 Willow Mills Road. Emma's daughter Lois was a weaver, her daughter Lillian a spooler. They worked at the mill. Uh, this is inside of Emma's house. George and Fanny's daughter Betty lived at 1600 Willow Mills Road. Betty was a weaver at the mill and the organist at the Willow Mills Sunday School. George and Fanny's daughter, Martha, lived at 1616 Willow Mills Road. Martha's son, Raymond, lived in this house until his death in 1999. Back to Mamie Starks. Mamie's parents died in 1903. She and her younger brother, Willie, were taken in by Clay Marchant. Mamie and Willie lived with the Marchants on top of the hill. Mamie moved out of the Willow Mills when she reached the age of majority. Twenty years later, Mamie and her husband, John Baltimore, she uh, married the carpenter's son. Mamie and John purchased her natal home at 1604. Mamie's cousin, weaving foreman Nick Giannini, lived next door at 1606. John and Mamie Baltimore had two children, Thomas and Louise. Thomas and Louise grew up. John and Mamie's son, Thomas, married Annie Marion. Thomas Baltimore and Annie had two daughters, Jean and Brenda. These Baltimores lived at 1707 Willow Mills Road, then moved to 1602 Willow Mills Road, where they built a house. Mamie and John Baltimore's daughter, Louise, met Woody Pritchett, center, seated here in front of the 1882 mill. Once upon a time, the 1882 mill looked like this. Once upon a time, Woody and Louise looked like this. They married October 21st, 1933. Woody did many things. He and Louise met while working at the mill. Subsequently, Woody worked for the railroad. His engine was in the movie Giant. Woody built a general store at 123 Franklin Street. In his capacious wooden mills lot, Woody raised livestock. Woody and Louise Pritchett had a son, also Woody. These three great-grandchildren of George Baltimore have moved away from the Willow Mills neighborhood, but they still come back to visit. To review, there was a neighborhood bounded by the railroad and the river. There was a mill. There were people. The mill operated for over a hundred years. The people worked in the mill. They lived on the road. They died and they moved up on the hill. This is Ms. Wilkes and the Willow Mills School. This photo was taken in 1933. There were the Will and Mills police. The Will and Mills police in mill cloth uniforms. The decision to specialize in uniform cloth was brilliant. Harry Poindexter explains, Uniform styles changed slowly and once a market was established, 
A mill of that type could estimate its output much more shrewdly than one making apparel fabrics. Since close similarity in subsequent orders of uniform cloth was of prime importance to an institution, competition was lessened once a mill had won a contract. Furthermore, foreign cloths were practically excluded because of the requirements of uniformity. The mill found a market and held it. The people worked hard and prospered. It was good. And so it was for three generations. Then nylon came along. In 1962, the mill closed. The social armature was rocked. Families lost their jobs. The safe harbor was broached. People left in search of work. A residential vacuum developed. The mill's machinery and real estate were up for sale. The following year, parts of the Will Mills village were annexed by the city of Charlottesville. Real estate speculators and vulture capitalists descended. Things do remain. The topography, the geography, and the architecture, the physical armature, these things remain. The beautiful borders and the beautiful contents remain. But boundaries have been breached. The Willow Mills is a neighborhood under threat and has been a neighborhood under threat since the late 1950s. Gladys Gatlin started as a specker in the mill. Later she was an office employee. Gladys was the last office employee to leave the mill. She turned off the lights. And so we fight. We fight inappropriate zoning. We fight absentee landlords. We fight discouragement and complacency. We fight cut through traffic. We fight inappropriate projects. We fight for quality of life and for neighborhood protection. Roy Baltimore came back to the Willow Mills neighborhood after a life away. Roy was our first neighborhood president, grandson of George the Carpenter. Roy led the effort for years. The baton of neighborhood leadership has passed through many hands. The beauty and the challenges remain. As our neighborhood president, Victoria Dunham, said to the Planning Commission in her letter of December 30, 2008, since its annexation in 1963, the residents of the Will and Mills neighborhood have made numerous attempts to secure the city's acknowledgement of and support for our community's historic and residential nature. This effort has been carried forward by generations of Will and Mills residents in hopes of a listening cooperation from the city to help us realize the promise that planning and zoning hold for our neighborhood. We continue to work the next meeting on Will and Mills land use is scheduled for February 28th, 5 p.m. at a joint work session between the Planning Commission and City Council. Life goes on. New Willies have moved in. Reinforcements. New Willies are being born, joining the flock. We will work for our home. We always have done. Standing at the intersection of Franklin Street and Willow Mills Road, you are one mile from Monticello. From this vantage point, you can feel and see over 200 years of history. Look 154 degrees south, southeast, and you can see the mountain where Jefferson in May of 1778 began site work for his home. Look east down the street and you can see the Will Mills Chapel, built in 1886. It is important to remember where we come from. This is done by the preservation of documents, 
the preservation of verbal history, preservation of the built environment, and preservation of landscape. The density, the siting and scale of the extant mill village buildings in the Willow Mills neighborhood is the fabric of history, and it is our home. There was a common name applied to this area. They called it the place. The place. The place, the P-L-A-C-E. Uh -huh. I don't know how that came into being, but uh, if you listen to some of the older people, Louis's mother, some uh -huh. of my aunts, when they, whenever they referred to this area, they'd always call the it place. the place. Uh -huh. This, this family has moved on the place, this family has moved away from the place. Right. That was the terminology they used. And it extended up to the last host I show on that little on rough sketch I've got. Uh -huh. yeah. How'd you and Louise meet? Well, we were right and right across the street from each other, finally, but actually, I'm, you, when, you, when you were living here on this area, which is called the place, place. you knew everybody. Right. You visited People, we 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 would go to different people's homes for dinner after church, you know. Uh huh. Uh, you knew everybody. Right. It was a, as I look back on it now, it was a very unique. Oh yeah, it's one relationship. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful situation. Now, Roy, how about you say when you were a boy, when you went beyond the railroad tracks, was there anything down there, or was it just what was down there? Nothing. <clears throat> uh, there were a few houses down there, but it was. Uh, it was called Hogwalla. Right. <laughs> Get the rescue squad, yeah. Now, now how about going into town? Was the road all paved and everything? Or was this road gravel? doesn't pave. The, the pavement started... The pavement started just this shy of Mead Avenue. Uh-huh. It's a dirt road. What did, what did people down here think about it when the city went to annex Willem Mills? Did they... And when you were little, was this Market Street or was it Willow Mill Road? Willow Mill Road. Willow Mill Road. Right. In fact, for a long, long time, as I was writing to Louise from Newport News, I always drifted to Willow Mill Road, never Market Street. Uh -huh. In fact, the the community group, when I first moved back here, had a project to get this street renamed Willow Mill Road rather than East Market Street. Uh -huh. But it never was carried through to, to a success. And they would need to do that. I wish it been because I prefer that it right now I would prefer it could be called Willow Mill Road. Oh, I, 